Hello, everybody. It's your guy, Dave Neal, stand-up comic host of Bachelor in Paradise, a guy's review. It's that time of year again, folks. We are looking to see who's going to be the next Bachelor. That's right. After two seasons of Bachelorettes and a season of Bachelor in Paradise, we will finally be getting back to Bachelor, where we can watch a bunch of influencers compete for the like of one male lead. We'll see how it goes. Last season's Bachelor was, uh, to put it kindly, a dumpster fire, but actually ended up with a love story. Who would have thought, right? Even against the odds. A broken clock is still right twice a day, as they say. Do me a favor and like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And then also go to patreon.com slash Dave Neal to get extra behind-the-scenes content. I'll be releasing a video later today about the behind-the-scenes of my interview with Brandon Quinn Scanzano, which will be available on Friday. All right, folks. So anyway, yeah, I've got Greg Grippo here as the graphic because there is a petition to have him be the next lead and then there's a petition to have him not be the next lead. Do the petitions just fight each other? How does that work? Our country couldn't be more divided that we can't even choose a guy to, uh, you know, bump his Harrison, uh, you know, take a swing at his old pinata, if you will, uh, you know, uh, on national TV. I mean, it really, it really just goes to show we'll never get on the same page with anything. But let's jump right into it. Let's go into who may or may not be the next Bachelor. We've got Ivan. Justin, Tyler, Mike, Andrew, Dr. Joe, Uncle Anthony, Michael A. I can't believe I got those all in one day. Oh, my gosh. A real tour de force, a, 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 a bowl of clam chowder, if you will, here of different uh, jaw lines. I'll tell you what, though, a very good-looking crew. This looks like a coach of a, uh, a very good-looking sports team, right? You've got Uncle Anthony here. Of course, that's Trey's uncle who is uh, made – waves yesterday uh, through no fault of his own. I mean, can you imagine being an uncle? Maybe Uncle Anthony doesn't like the limelight. He's like, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm not. It's not for me. I'm not trying to make waves. And then all of a sudden he makes out with Tejuan. And then <laughs> a year later, she's kissing his nephew. And that brings him into the mix. I mean, can you imagine what's going on in Uncle Anthony's life right now? I bet you he's pretty uh, hot on the old Tinder or Bumble or Farmers Only. I don't know. What, what do old people use for uh, dating? Life after 50? All right, folks. Oh, I don't need to hear the ageism. I'm 36. I'm right around the corner. The grays are coming in on just the right side of my head. That's because my fiance sits next to me in the car. Are you going to make a left? Oh, shut up, buddy. You're getting grays. All right. Uh, speaking of grays, we've got some... Um, you know, late 20s, 30s, 40s, maybe Uncle Anthony's in his 50s. We have a wide variety of guys here, and we're going to go down the pipeline of who you guys want. I'll tell you right now, Ivan, great guy, not going to happen. Justin, I would like. I would like Justin. I would enjoy Tyler. As we know, his soulmate left him for a race car driver. Uh, one of the greatest of all times, if not the greatest. And then she says, uh, Camilla Kendra says she didn't leave him for a race car driver, but either way, she was photographed at his house by herself. I mean, it's like, what is she going to do? She The photos were her. And um, I don't know. I don't know, Tyler, uh, if he's going to be uh, into it. He would probably, I, I would say this, out of all of these guys here, Tyler would be the most expensive if they wanted someone. Well, maybe not. Maybe Uncle, maybe Uncle Anthony commands a lot. He does look like he's ready to sell me a yacht. <laughs> you know, it's a 72 foot long vessel and it's uh, got automatic, you know, uh, sales. I don't know. Uh, doesn't he look like, you know, everyone says he looks like uh, who Jason Oppenheim. Is that who they say? I don't, I don't watch, I don't watch, I don't watch that reality TV. I can only stick to one reality smutty franchise. I can't be going to see what, who, you know, who's buying houses out of my price range here. We like to rent. It's the economy, late stage capitalism. All right, folks. So we got Tyler there, Mike Johnson. I mean, I don't know what, I mean, are there skeletons in the closet? Why haven't we had Mike Johnson before? Like what, what do they know about him that they're not telling us? Seems like a great guy. He's, uh, uh, beautiful. I mean, I don't know. I'll take Mike Johnson. I'll take Andrew. Of course, Andrew and Justin this year had to apologize for previous tweets. They both did, uh, I guess, what you would expect to be done. They owned up to their childish past. They've changed, and I'm okay with that. You know, that's up to you to decide to take their apology if you want. I'm okay with who they are. Andrew's uh, grown up and traveled to Europe to play football. He's broadened his horizons. Justin's an artist. He's probably interacted with people uh, in his 20s that he never got a chance to in his teen years. Dr. Joe out there saving lives. Who doesn't want a doctor? I mean, listen, if you're going to have Dr. Joe 
on a season. I've said this all along. Why not cast only first responders? Why not cast only uh, essential employees? Is it a, more essential employees? You know, you know, give me some, give me some, uh, you know, grocery, uh, be, you know, bagger uh, Beckys. Okay. Gro- yeah. I want some grocery bagger Beckys. A lot of people say, Hey Dave, how do you write this stuff? I don't. That's the problem. Sometimes we drive into a dead end, uh, a fancy cul-de-sac. We got to do a three point turn and get the car out of there. All right. So, um, Dr. Joe, he would be a great addition if they went with him. Of course, he's on this season of Bachelorette, so we're told hasn't showed up yet. We'll have to see uh, if he's able to, um, I don't know, uh, suture up his wounds from the uh, broken heart and find love again. I don't know. And of course, uh, Uncle Anthony, which we know nothing about. And then Michael A. Michael A. is a character choice. I mean this with respect. A character in in comedy is something that's slightly different than the norm, right? So two peas in a pod would be Dumb and Dumber, whereas a character would be Chris Farley to Mike, to David Spade, straight man. I use that example all the time. Michael A. is a character, respectfully, in the sense that if you're going to cast for Michael A., you would need to cast differently than you would for Ivan, uh, Mike Johnson, Tyler Cameron, Dr. Joe, because Michael A. has a kid. Now, that doesn't mean everyone, it doesn't mean just because he has a kid, he needs to find someone else who has a kid. But chances are, in a lot of cases, you know, he would probably have more success with someone who's got their own kid, understands the duties of raising your child first and then a relationship second, whatever the case may be. Listen, I don't need uh, the stepmoms of of the world to get mad at me over here, but I just think that if you're going to cast for Michael A., it's a different scenario. So, Bachelor producers, Bachelor casting, have they been casting... Different people for all these. Now, of course, uh, Uncle Anthony's, for the most part, a novelty, a joke. Although, Blake Moyne's mom, Emily, the fantastic Emily, uh, also a sing- single lady, would be uh, said she would go on the show if Uncle Anthony did senior, senior which, by the way, I, I don't mean to insult him. He looks very young here. I don't know. Se- senior bachelor so loaded. There needs to be a bachelor that's not senior, because they've been trying to cast this thing for five years now. I get it. The pandemic, maybe you don't have a house full of seniors over there, you know during the, uh, you know, a, a once in a lifetime pandemic. I understand that uh, maybe they couldn't get an insurance claim for that. But, um, you know, Uncle Anthony, Emily Moynes, they're not seniors. They're in their 50s, early 60s, whatever they are. That's, you know, that's, uh, that's young in 2021. I mean, technically, maybe that is seniors if you're in your 60s, but we need to destigmatize seniors. Get them love. Seniors need to bump Harrison's too. I'll die on that hill. I will die on that hill. Get them the love they deserve. Uh, Unprotected love. (laughs) You know what I mean? Boy, age gracefully and be careful who you bang is what they tell you. you Be careful who you bang. That's a nice sound clip we get from the audience. All right, folks. So anyway, Andrew Spencer. Okay, let's just get into this. What do we have next here? Let's get into this. So Nick Vial had made a quick clip on YouTube shorts here about who he thinks will be the bachelor I probably will disagree with this but let's have a listen anyway yeah. is not as attractive as a role as it used to be that's why i can't see tyler cameron doing it i i think tyler cameron has zero chance to mm. come out looking better, looking better than yeah. going in i don't think people fully appreciate the lightning in the bottle that tyler captured on hannah brown season we watched it through a lens of hannah brown having all the power we saw this guy who like knew what to say was very charming it worked when he was only saying that one thing to one person it was mm-hmm. always hannah making her feel better at after she was sad about some bull he was dealing with, he looked fabulous, but now he's the bachelor. And now we're watching it through the lens of having, having all the power and have that same conversation with 30 people, not just one. Bachelor people will see that. And people will see that as a guy who knows what to say to women in the right situations. And I just think by the end of the season, you won't be rooting for him like you were before. Well, first of all, I don't I don't disagree. Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. I don't disagree with, disagree with Nick here. Now, Nick has been... In both scenarios, he's been the guy. It's almost like this. When you're not the lead of the show, like it's very easy when you're not the lead of the show to just come in and have that Kramer moment. You know, you guys know Seinfeld, he comes in, you know, he has that moment. He has a fun moment. Seinfeld carries the show. Okay, that's the hard job. That's why the lead gets paid the big bucks. The Matthew McConaughey's, they carry the thing. And if you can't carry it, you can't carry it. Now, 
Not to say that you can't carry it here, but the question is, can you carry the show as the lead and not come out being whittled down to nothing? No, look at Matt James. Matt James is a great guy, by all accounts. Charitable guy, funny guy. And what did they do to him on the show? They resorted him to, I mean, it was so disrespectful what, what goes down. Um, and I think this is more of a modern take on the show with, with how hostile the uh, social media is with with everything that's going on find me uh, pilot pete pilot pete everyone loved pilot pete till he was a lead then he go oh he can't make a decision colton underwood he he flipped he turned gay i'm kidding colton he was gay all along he was you know closeted he uh, couldn't face his uh we get all that story well netflix special coming out soon i will be there to report on it i'll tell you about that speaking of petitions colton underwood wow um hope you use that ppp loan to get some therapy there or maybe paid back that tracking device who knows come on it was for his charity uh audit those charities though i don't trust them i don't trust charities and i don't trust tax exempt churches all right should we become a church i was thinking i'm gonna have a pretty uh substantial uh a tax payload this year. Maybe uh, we should become the Church of Dave Neal. What do you guys think? We worship the Harrison. <laughs> I'm just making this up. I just offended somebody. Don't make fun of somebody's churches. We all are having fun until you make fun of somebody's church. All right, looking at you, Mormons. I'm kidding. They're uh, Mormons are actually the e I think the easiest to rib. I think they get it. They're like, I know we sl we sleep in our you know sex uh, pajamas or whatever that what I think. <laughs> All right, my best friend was from Mormon. Not anymore, past tense. All right, moving along. I was raised Catholic. We can still go to Mass once in a while. Get down on the knees for the Lord. Bump the Bibles. Okay, uh, Old Testament. I like to get it old school. All right, so um, anyway, folks, I don't disagree. By the way, I love, I love tangents because... You just quickly weed out who's here for the good stuff. And by good stuff, I don't mean the content. I mean just the these the irreverent. You know what I mean? Like if you're not if this is my Marilyn Monroe moment. If you're not here for my irreverent commentary, you don't deserve me at the, you know, baseless uh joking. All right. So move on, we'll move on from that. So Bachelor, of course, three weeks ago, Bachelor casting on Instagram. Do you fit the bill? Apply to be on the next season of The Bachelor now. Link in bio. Now casting eligible bachelorettes, divorcees, and single moms. And he's like, now casting eligible bachelorettes, divorcees, smoking. It's like it's like a, it almost reads like a Jerry Springer. You know, do you remember that at the end of every Jerry Springer episode? Looking for people who fell in love with a second cousin. Alabama's uh, not allowed to. You know, too many people from the South applied. Uh, um, kidding. Calm down. Roll Tide. All right. Roll into that family reunion. Be careful who you bang. That's what they Be say. Be careful who you bang. It applies in so many different uh, uh, mindsets here. So anyway, they're casting that. And of course, Bachelor whatever says, sounds like y'all are trying to cast for Michael. Googly eyes. What? Love that. Bachelorette Windmill said, tell me Michael's the Bachelor without telling me Michael's the Bachelor. Now, of course, they, they, they this was three weeks ago. I believe, I mean, if they're going to consider Michael as the Bachelor, they're going to have to know what their options are. So of course... Now, you know, in other casting uh, posts, they don't, they're not looking for divorcees. Uh, by the way, divorcee, whenever we have a saying that, that sounds a little ugly, we, we French it up a little bit. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I'm not a, I'm not a previously married. No, no, no I'm a divorcee. I'm a, yeah. I don't know. Uh, there's something there. All right. So let's keep it going here. Who else do we have? Nick of the unofficial spokesperson for the show. And he knows stuff. The fact that he amped up Greg and putting down Tyler it makes me think Greg is their pick for next Bachelor and it's done. Eek, easy pass for me. Vomit emoji. Listen, nothing annoys me more than the vomit emoji. Do me a favor, comment with a vomit emoji. Uh, maybe maybe YouTube doesn't have vomit emojis. Maybe they're uh, more highbrow than that. Well, uh, Steve Voss says... Um, uh, if they actually do make him the Bachelor, would you watch? 25% say yes. 75% said hell no. Let me tell you something. Those numbers are so... Listen, you, everybody, I'm not going to watch this season. Then Monday night rolls around and they're like, coming up on The Bachelor. And you're like, well, I'll just watch this one episode. And the next thing you know, you're like, Tyler, <laughs> she start rattling up. Susan C, you know, whatever. Uh, we know too much. Uh, there's a lot of, listen, there's a lot of real life issues we should all work on. Uh, and there's a lot of real life issues that I've got a lot of empathy for out there. It feels very superficial to even be making these videos sometimes. But I know you're doing the dishes, you're breastfeeding the kid, whatever you're doing out there, sir. Uh, I know that, um, you know, sometimes we just need an escape. We just need some gray noise in the background. So let me be your gray noise. But let's not, for, let's not keep our head in the sands to all of the issues going on in the world. And at the very least, let's understand that all of us with beating hearts 
with red blood, uh, with very similar genetic makeups, because humans, as different as we all look, we're basically the same exact thing. We come from stardust. We are just souls in a meat package. Let's just remember that we're all trying our best and have empathy and and uh, grace for others out there who aren't born into such privilege that we have. Because let me tell you something, where we come from, I don't know. Love your neighbors, folks. All right, you know, isn't that the funniest part of the Bible? It's like, just love your neighbors. And everyone's like, my neighbor's got a blue lawn through it. Just love your neighbors. My neighbor likes that AOC. Just love your neighbors. My neighbor thinks they deserve. Okay, <laughs> it's like, let's just, I understand. Neighbors can be shitty. All right, so anyway. Uh, just a heads up, I work in the industry and just got confirmation that Tyler Cameron is not doing Dancing with the Stars. He's doing Dirty Dancing on Fox. Now, I've looked into this. Jennifer Gray of the original Dirty Dancing, RIP, Patrick Swayze. What up, my guy? Uh, speaking of life is short, right? Come on. Pancreatic cancer, Steve Jobs, Patrick Swayze. Golly. Every day, just cherish it. All right. So um, I'm at that age now where I'm like, oh, my parents are aging. I'm starting to like this. There's people and cars are not safe. I don't even have kids yet and I'm already getting nervous. You know what I mean? I can't imagine. Shout out to everyone out there with children, okay? Shout out to all of you people out there that have kids and every day you have to worry about some existential crisis, okay? I don't know. All right, so anyway, Dirty Dancing on Fox. I looked it up. Jennifer Grey um, is going to be executive producing and starring in this uh, not a remake, but a sequel to Dirty Dancing. I can't find anything that has Tyler Cameron attached to it. He has been working out with a professional dancer. People have spotted that. He's not doing Dancing with the Stars, as far as I know. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see. If, is he actually doing Dirty Dancing? Is it a lead role? Is he playing Patrick Swayze's son? I'll be there all day long. If you tell me Tyler Cameron is playing Patrick Swayze's son, I would love to break that information. I, You know what? I work in enter. I, I probably know people that know this. I'm going to post on my Facebook for, to get information here. If there's one place where I can find this information out, it should be here. Um, all right. So that that's that. Now, just to, just to rewind real quick back to uh, this previous post that says uh, Nick is defending Greg and putting down Tyler. He's not putting down Tyler. He's just stating the obvious. Tyler got the best edit possible. Tyler knew he wasn't going to win. He turned Hannah down. He was like, all right, I respect ladies. Chances are, I mean, he knew he's got Gigi Haddad in his DMs around the corner. He's date, you know, he literally what, you know, he's, he's, he's got the upper echelon of young Hollywood, if you know what I mean. And, uh, and no offense to Hannah Brown roll tide, but he friend zoned her in my humble opinion. You might disagree. I know we're all sensitive to who we love here, but, um, yeah, the idea that they can afford him, he's got 2 million followers followers and he doesn't need bachelor his following count won't go up he already hit the glass ceiling of bachelor bachelorhood so unless they offer him a million bucks and just a chunk of cash you know i don't think he's going to do it where as far as greg i mean greg greg's already got he, greg's stock can only go up if he goes on the bachelor because he he came out about as low as you're going to get as a contestant you know that peter kraus Greg Grippo, he came out about as low as you're going to get. He can only rebuild his career from here. By the way, I do want to say as a random shout out, I do believe Chris Harrison will be on this season of Dancing with the Stars. And when they announce that, I am going to have some wild coverage. That would be a very good thing for his PR team to do because if they made Sean Spicer look likable, Chris Harrison's going to do just fine. All right. Okay, let's keep it going. So, um... What do we got here? Trey, how does your uncle look like 32 tops? That's an excellent question, Kate. It would help if I knew how old he is. No, no, he doesn't. He looks good, but he doesn't look 32. Um, all right, so let's see what else we got here. Let's go down the list. Um, heads up, we got the dirty dancing part. The next bachelor. Jesus Christ, my ears. Oh my gosh, that just scared me out of my skin. Sorry about that. So a uh, TikTok was made who the next bachelor should be. No, no, uh, they want Trey's uncle. Okay, so that's a real waste of my time to cover that. All right, petition time. Don't let Greg Grippo be The Bachelor. 589 have signed. Here, to the 589 people that signed this, don't you have laundry to do? Don't you have, like, have mail that's unopened? Just a stack of things. Isn't there a kid being like, can you take me to the park, mama? Like, what do we do? I mean, look, if you truly feel strongly against Greg Grippo, absolutely. But you understand these petitions don't mean anything. Like, like it does, doesn't mean anything. We, but by the way, I don't think Greg Grippo will be the next Bachelor. I think Bachelor Nation did listen to the disgust that people had 
for him sort of uh, in the way he quit on Katie and in, in how everything went down. I'm not going to use psychological terms because I don't have a degree in psychology. So I'm not going to call it whatever other people are calling it because I don't know what it was that he did. But clearly he was triggered. He had anxiety, some sort of attachment. Whatever. Now I'm using terms. <laughs> clearly he's a borderline personality disorder, but I'm not here to label people and narcissist. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know what he is. Um, chances are he's just a guy who's trying to work it out. He's in therapy. Uh, we Bachelor Nation are coming together to request ABC Warner Brothers NZK stop Greg Grippo from becoming the next Bachelor. I love how they had to add NZK, like if that's going to make a difference. Well, they didn't say it. They didn't tag NZK in here. As women who watched this show and have for many years, some of us from the very beginning, we were upset by watching what happened between Greg and Katie on screen. If he has made the Bachelor, the franchise will be publicly validating that emotional manipulation is love and that we are allowed to spill our unresolved trauma on our intimate partners and make them think that they're the crazy ones. It would be a major setback for the gender-based violence movement and a stain on the franchise's already sordid history. Additionally, the many stories coming out regarding women who have been emotionally and physically abused by Greg Grippo. Physically abused? There's a story that Greg Grippo physically abused someone? Send that in. I haven't seen that. In the past, only lent to the importance of keeping this man out of, the, out of any and all positions of power and high esteem. We wish him well and hope he gets the trauma and mental health support that he needs so he is able to treat future partners with respect and real love. But he is not in that place yet. If he is the next lead, we will stop watching. I, I, I definitely agree that he is not in the place to be the lead. I definitely agree with that. As far as physical abuse, I mean, emotional abuse, that's kind of harder to, to, uh, to uh, you know, I mean, I'm not an expert. So uh, if he's feeling anxious and ruminating and toxic and all these things, and if Katie's a byproduct of that, um, you know, that, uh, that uh, you know, that wake that he would cast with his own issues because that's what it really comes down to you have your own issues you cast awake and it tips over somebody else's boat right no one no one unless you're a psychopath and i don't say that lightly a true psychopath would be someone who and again i'm probably wrong you'll correct me on this one but a psychopath is someone who doesn't even like they'll do something evil knowing it's evil and not care right is that true but uh, in most cases people and that's a very small por portion of people in most cases people are just so caught up in their own thing they don't realize that they're uh you know farting in somebody else's elevator if you will so anyway but as far as physical abuse, I haven't heard anything about that, but I'm, I'm all ears for sure. Uh, but I do agree with this petition in the sense that I think if you're Greg Grippo, you're better off doing therapy for a year, go on Bachelor in Paradise next year to redeem yourself if you do feel like you've improved this and that. He does look like he's a nice, likable guy when he's on his Instagram with his buddies, but clearly, you know, he opened his heart and he wanted Katie to fill something. And what we all have to learn is that other people don't fill our, uh, our hearts we do that ourselves. Uh, relationships are dessert, not the main course. Well, in response, this petition is only a couple days old. The initial petition, folks, make Greg Rippo the next bachelor. If this isn't the United States of America, don't let Greg Rippo make Greg Rippo. Don't let Greg Rippo make. Okay, so it's this one only has 19 signatures, which is basically like a like a Grippo family barbecue. Katie clearly gaslit one of the most genuine men of her season on tonight's episode of The Bachelorette. So don't you love? Uh, uh, <laughs> Don't you love how people get their messaging ahead of the story? So the night of the show, people, they, they heard that Katie thought he gaslit her. So they go, Katie clearly gaslit one of the most genuine men of her season on tonight's episode of The Bachelorette. Regardless of how Katie allegedly feels about Greg, she left many things unsaid. And sometimes those hurt the most. Sign this petition to give Greg a chance at the love he truly deserves from a woman that will actually appreciate him. <laughs> Signed, Greg's mom. No, I'm kidding. All right. Uh, this, who is this? Adetola Ad Ad Oho started the petition two weeks ago. And they have a blistering 19 people. I mean, you barely have a football team there. <laughs> Sign the petition. I don't know, folks. What do you guys think? Who like If you had to put your money on it, who's the next Bachelor? I mean, it could be... I would say the highest odds are Michael A. I would say the long shot for Bachelor would be Tyler Cameron. I think that would be very good for Bachelor as far as a fan base goes. I know some people don't like Tyler Cameron, but it's like, you can't hate a guy because he has nice abs. They go, oh, he's got no personality. I don't know about that. I think he's, I think he's got plenty of personality. You just can't see it because you're stuck looking at that beautiful jawline. I understand. I get it. Oh, all right. I don't know. What else? Who else do we have? Andrew? Hmm... Maybe Justin. I've always thought Justin was good, but I thought if they wanted to give him a bachelor edit, they missed their chance. We only got to see Justin on the final episode. But if you want to define somebody 
by who they were in their in their hardest moments and their darkest moments, Justin comes out on top. Because when Justin was being, you know, I mean, he made it to the fantasy suites almost, right? <laughs> he had a uh, he had a lot of blood flowing getting ready for that evening. He was a uh, manscaped, ready to go. He had took his horny goat weed. He had a pre episode rub and tug. He did all nine yards. And then uh, she's like, yeah, go take a, yeah, pack up the paint, <laughs> pack up the paint, folks. <laughs> and he had to uh, put the old uh, uh, yeah, palette away, if you know what I mean. Uh, so anyway, I think Justin would be good. I think he's smart, funny, goofy, not, you know, he's, he's, he's beautiful looking, but he also has a fun side. Mike Johnson would be great. Like I said, we already did all this. We already did all this. You th- these are good choices. Uncle Anthony, if we can't choose on anyone else, we're going to go with Uncle Anthony. We're, we're going to turn this car right around or you're getting Uncle Anthony. You don't like it? We'll give you Greg Grippo. <laughs> 19 people agree. All right, folks, leave a comment, like this video, go to patreon.com slash Dave Neal. If you want to check out my behind the scenes content, this is your last chance to sign up for my newsletter. If you haven't, uh, not forever, but today I'm going to be sending out uh, my interview just to the newsletter that I did with Brandon, I'm sorry, Brendan Quinn Scanzano uh, from Katie Thurston's season of The Bachelorette. It's a good conversation that will be live to everybody on Friday and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye now.